This is section O two of The Complete Works of George Saville Advice to a Daughter Husband. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. Read by John Greenman. Section two Advice to a Daughter Husband That which challengeth the next place in your thoughts is how to live with a husband and though that is so large a word that few rules can be fixed to it which are unchangeable the methods being as various as the several tempers of men to which they must be suited yet i cannot omit some general observations which with the help of your own may the better direct you in the part of your life upon which your happiness most dependeth it is one of the disadvantages belonging to your sex that young women are seldom permitted to make their own choice their friends care and experience are thought safer guides to them than their own fancies and their modesty often forbiddeth them to refuse when their parents recommend though their inward consent may not entirely go along with it in this case there remaineth nothing for them to do but to endeavour to make that easy which falleth to their lot and by a wise use of every thing they may dislike in a husband turn that by degrees to be very supportable which if neglected might in time beget an aversion you must first lay it down for a foundation in general that there is inequality in the sexes and that for the better o economy of the world the men who were to be the law-givers had the larger share of reason bestowed upon them by which means your sex is the better prepared for the compliance that is necessary for the better performance of those duties which seem to be most properly assigned to it this looks a little uncourtly at the first appearance but upon examination it will be found that nature is so far from being unjust to you that she is partial on your side she hath made you such large amends by other advantages for the seeming injustice of the first distribution that the right of complaining is come over to our sex you have it in your power not only to free yourselves but to subdue your masters and without violence throw both their natural and legal authority at your feet we are made of differing tempers that our defects may the better be mutually supplied your sex wanteth our reason for your conduct and our strength for your protection ours wanteth your gentleness to soften and to entertain us the first part of our life is a good deal subjected to you in the nursery where you reign without competition and by that means have the advantage of giving the first impressions afterwards you have stronger influences which well managed have more force in your behalf than all our privileges and jurisdictions can pretend to have against you you have more strength in your looks than we have in our laws and more power by your tears than we have by our arguments it is true that the laws of marriage run in a harsher style towards your sex obey is an ungenteel word and less easy to be digested by making such an unkind distinction in the words of the contract and so very unsuitable to the excess of good manners which generally goes before it besides the universality of the rule seemeth to be a grievance and it appeareth reasonable that there might be an exemption for extraordinary women from ordinary rules to take away the just exception that lieth against the false measure of general equality it may be alleged by the counsel retained by your sex that as there is in all other laws an appeal from the letter to the equity in cases that require it it is as reasonable that some court of a larger jurisdiction might be erected where some wives might resort and plead specially 
and in such instances where nature is so kind as to raise them above the level of their own sex they might have relief and obtain a mitigation in their own particular of a sentence which was given generally against womankind the causes of separation are now so very coarse that few are confident enough to buy their liberty at the price of having their modesty so exposed and for disparity of minds which above all other things requireth a remedy the laws have made no provision so little refined are numbers of men by whom they are compiled this and a great deal more might be said to give a color to the complaint but the answer to it in short is that the institution of marriage is too sacred to admit a liberty of objecting to it that the supposition of yours being the weaker sex having without all doubt a good foundation maketh it reasonable to subject it to the masculine dominion that no rule can be so perfect as not to admit some exceptions but the law presumeth there would be so few found in this case who would have a sufficient right to such a privilege that it is safer some injustice should be connived at in a very few instances than to break into an establishment upon which the order of humane society does so much depend you are therefore to make your best of what is settled by law and custom and not vainly imagine that it will be changed for your sake but that you may not be discouraged as if you lay under the weight of an incurable grievance you are to know that by a wise and dexterous conduct it will be in your power to relieve yourself from anything that looketh like a disadvantage in it for your better direction i will give a hint of the most ordinary causes of dissatisfaction between man and wife that you may be able by such a warning to live so upon your guard that when you shall be married you may know how to cure your husband's mistakes and to prevent your own first then you are to consider you live in a time which hath rendered some kind of frailties so habitual that they lay claim to large grains of allowance the world in this is somewhat unequal and our sex seemeth to play the tyrant in distinguishing partially for ourselves by making that in the utmost degree criminal in the woman which in a man passeth under a much gentler censure the root and the excuse of this injustice is the preservation of families from any mixture which may bring a blemish to them and whilst the point of honor continues to be so placed it seems unavoidable to give your sex the greater share of the penalty but if in this it lieth under any disadvantage you are more than recompensed by having the honor of families in your keeping the consideration so great a trust must give you maketh full amends and this power the world hath lodged in you can hardly fail to restrain the severity of an ill husband and to improve the kindness and esteem of a good one this being so remember that next to the danger of committing the fault yourself the greatest is that of seeing it in your husband do not seem to look or hear that way if he is a man of sense he will reclaim himself the folly of it is of itself sufficient to cure him if he is not so he will be provoked but not reformed to expostulate in these cases looketh like declaring war and preparing reprisals which to a thinking husband would be a dangerous reflection besides it is so coarse a reason which will be assigned for a lady's too great warmth upon such an occasion that modesty no less than prudence ought to restrain her since such an undecent complaint makes a wife much more ridiculous than the injury that provoketh her to it but it is yet worse and more unskilful to blaze it in the world expecting it should rise up in arms to take her part whereas she will find it can have no other effect than that she will be served up in all companies as the reigning jest at that time and will continue to be the common entertainment 
till she is rescued by some newer folly that cometh upon the stage and driveth her away from it the impertinence of such methods is so plain that it doth not deserve the pains of being laid open be assured that in these cases your discretion and silence will be the most prevailing reproof an affected ignorance which is seldom a virtue is a great one here and when your husband seeth how unwilling you are to be uneasy there is no stronger argument to persuade him not to be unjust to you besides it will naturally make him more yielding in other things and whether it be to cover or redeem his offence you may have the good effects of it whilst it lasteth and all that while have the most reasonable ground that can be of presuming such a behaviour will at last entirely convert him there is nothing so glorious to a wife as a victory so gained a man so reclaimed is for ever after subjected to her virtue and her bearing for a time is more than rewarded by a triumph that will continue as long as her life the next thing i will suppose is that your husband may love wine more than is convenient it will be granted that though there are vices of a deeper dye there are none that have greater deformity than this when it is not restrained but with all this the same custom which is the more to be lamented for its being so general should make it less uneasy to every one in particular who is to suffer by the effects of it so that in the first place it will be no new thing if you should have a drunkard for your husband and there is by too frequent examples evidence enough that such a thing may happen and yet a wife may live too without being miserable self-love dictateth aggravating words to every thing we feel ruin and misery are the terms we apply to whatever we do not like forgetting the mixture allotted to us by the condition of human life by which it is not intended we should be quite exempt from trouble it is fair if we can escape such a degree of it as would oppress us and enjoy so much of the pleasant part as may lessen the ill taste of such things as are unwelcome to us every thing hath two sides and for our own ease we ought to direct our thoughts to that which may be least liable to exception to fall upon the worst side of a drunkard giveth so unpleasant a prospect that it is not possible to dwell upon it let us pass then to the more favourable part as far as a wife is concerned in it i am tempted to say if the irregularity of the expression could in strictness be justified that a wife is to thank god her husband hath faults mark the seeming paradox my dear for your own instruction it being intended no further a husband without faults is a dangerous observer he hath an eye so piercing and seeth everything so plain that it is exposed to his full censure and though i will not doubt but that your virtue will disappoint the sharpest inquiries yet few women can bear the having all they say or do represented in the clear glass of an understanding without faults nothing softeneth the arrogance of our nature like a mixture of some frailties it is by them we are best told that we must not strike too hard upon others because we ourselves do so often deserve blows they pull our rage by the sleeve and whisper gentleness to us in our censures even when they are rightly applied the faults and passions of husbands bring them down to you and make them content to live upon less unequal terms than faultless men would be willing to stoop to so haughty is mankind till humbled by common weaknesses and defects which in our corrupted state contribute more towards the reconciling us to one another than all the precepts of the philosophers and divines so that where the errors of our nature make amends for the disadvantages of yours it is more your part to make use of the benefit than to quarrel at the fault 
thus in case a drunken husband should fall to your share if you will be wise and patient his wine shall be of your side it will throw a veil over your mistakes and will set out and improve everything you do that he is pleased with others will like him less and by that means he may perhaps like you the more when after having dined too well he is received at home without a storm or so much as a reproaching look the wine will naturally work out all in kindness which a wife must encourage let it be wrapped up in never so much impertinence on the other side it would boil up into rage if the mistaken wife should treat him roughly like a certain thing called a kind of shrew in which the world with all its plenty cannot show a more senseless ill-bred forbidding creature consider that where the man will give such frequent intermissions of the use of his reason the wife insensibly getteth a right of governing in the vacancy and that raiseth her character and credit in the family to a higher pitch than perhaps could be done under a sober husband who never putteth himself into an incapacity of holding the reins if these are not entire consolations at least they are remedies to some degree they cannot make drunkenness a virtue nor a husband given to it a felicity but you will do yourself no ill office in the endeavouring by these means to make the best of such a lot in case it should happen to be yours and by the help of a wise observation to make that very supportable which would otherwise be a load that would oppress you the next case i will put is that your husband may be choleric or ill-humoured to this it may be said that passionate men generally make amends at the foot of the account such a man if he is angry one day without any sense will the next day be as kind without any reason so that by marking how the wheels of such a man's head are used to move you may easily bring over all his passion to your party instead of being struck down by his thunder you shall direct it where and upon whom you shall think it best applied thus are the strongest poisons turned to the best remedies but then there must be art in it and a skilful hand else the least bungling maketh it mortal there is a great deal of nice care requisite to deal with a man of this complexion choler proceedeth from pride and maketh a man so partial to himself that he swelleth against contradiction and thinketh he is lessened if he is opposed you must in this case take heed of increasing the storm by an unwary word or kindling the fire whilst the wind is in a corner which may blow it in your face you are dexterously to yield everything till he beginneth to cool and then by slow degrees you may rise and gain upon him your gentleness well timed will like a charm dispel his anger ill-placed a kind smile will reclaim when a shrill pettish answerer would provoke him rather than fail upon such occasions when other remedies are too weak a little flattery may be admitted which by being necessary will cease to be criminal if ill-humour and sullenness and not open and sudden heat is his disease there is a way of treating that too so as to make it a grievance to be endured in order to it you are first to know that naturally good sense hath a mixture of surly in it and there being so much folly in the world and for the most part so triumphant it giveth frequent temptations to raise the spleen of men who think right therefore that which may generally be called ill-humour is not always a fault it becometh one when either it is wrong applied or that it is continued too long when it is not so for this reason you must not too hastily fix an ill name upon that which may perhaps not deserve it and though the case should be that your husband might too sourly resent anything he disliketh it may so happen that more blame shall belong to your mistake than to his ill-humour 
if a husband behaveth himself sometimes with an indifference that a wife may think offensive she is in the wrong to put the worst sense upon it if by any means it will admit a better some wives will call it ill-humor if their husbands change their style from that which they used whilst they make their first addresses to them others will allow no intermission or abatement in the expressions of kindness to them not enough distinguishing times and forgetting that it is impossible for men to keep themselves up all their lives to the height of some extravagant moments a man may at some times be less careful in little things without any cold or disobliging reason for it as a wife may be too expecting in smaller matters without drawing upon herself the inference of being unkind and if your husband should be really sullen and have such frequent fits as might take away the excuse of it it concerneth you to have an eye prepared to discern the first appearances of the cloudy weather and to watch when the fit goeth off which seldom lasteth long if it is let alone but whilst the mind is sore everything galleth it and that maketh it necessary to let the black humour begin to spend itself before you come in and venture to undertake it if in the lottery of the world you should draw a covetous husband i confess it will not make you proud of your good luck yet even such a one may be endured too though there are few passions more untractable than that of avarice you must first take care that your definition of avarice may not be a mistake you are to examine every circumstance of your husband's fortune and weigh the reason of everything you expect from him before you have a right to pronounce that sentence the complaint is now so general against all husbands that it giveth great suspicion of its being often ill-grounded it is impossible they should all deserve that censure and therefore it is certain that it is many times misapplied he that spareth in everything is an inexcusable niggard he that spareth in nothing is as inexcusable a madman the mean is to spare in what is least necessary to lay out more liberally in what is most required in our several circumstances yet this will not always satisfy there are wives who are impatient of the rules of economy and are apt to call their husband's kindness in question if any other measure is put to their expense than that of their own fancy be sure to avoid this dangerous error such a partiality to yourself which is so offensive to an understanding man that he will very ill bear a wife's giving herself such an injurious preference to all the family and whatever belongeth to it but to admit the worst and that your husband is really a close-handed wretch you must in this as in other cases endeavor to make it less afflicting to you and first you must observe reasonable hours of speaking when you offer anything in opposition to this reigning humor a third hand and a wise friend may often prevail more than you will be allowed to do in your own cause sometimes you are dexterously to go along with him in things where you see that the niggardly part of his mind is most predominant by which you will have the better opportunity of persuading him in things where he may be more indifferent our passions are very unequal and are apt to be raised or lessened according as they work upon different objects they are not to be stopped or restrained in those things where our mind is more particularly engaged in other matters they are more tractable and will sometimes give reason a hearing and admit a fair dispute more than that there are few men even in this instance of avarice so entirely abandoned to it that at some hours and upon some occasions will not forget their natures and for that time turn prodigal the same man who will grudge himself what is necessary let his pride be raised and he shall be profuse at another time his anger shall have the same effect 
a fit of vanity ambition and sometimes of kindness shall open and enlarge his narrow mind a dose of wine will work upon this tough humor and for the time dissolve it your business must be in if this case happeneth to watch these critical moments and not let one of them slip without making your advantage of it and a wife may be said to want skill if by these means she is not able to secure herself in a good measure against the inconveniences this scurvy quality in a husband might bring upon her except he should be such an incurable monster as i hope will never fall to your share the last supposition i will make is that your husband should be weak and incompetent to make use of the privileges that belong to him it will be yielded that such a one leaveth room for a great many objections but god almighty seldom sendeth a grievance without a remedy or at least such a mitigation as taketh away a great part of the sting and the smart of it to make such a misfortune less heavy you are first to bring to your observation that a wife very often maketh a better figure for her husband's making no great one and there seemeth to be little reason why the same lady that chooseth a waiting woman with worse looks may not be content with a husband with less wit the argument being equal from the advantage of the comparison if you will be more ashamed in some cases of such a husband you will be less afraid than you would perhaps be of a wise one his unseasonable weakness may no doubt sometimes grieve you but then set against this that it giveth you the dominion if you will make the right use of it it is next to his being dead in which case the wife hath right to administer therefore be sure if you have such an idiot that none except yourself may have the benefit of the forfeiture such a fool is a dangerous beast if others have the keeping of him and you must be very undexterous if when your husband shall resolve to be an ass you do not take care he may be your ass but you must go skilfully about it and above all things take heed of distinguishing in public what kind of husband he is your inward thoughts must not hinder the outward payment of the consideration that is due to him your slighting him in company besides that it would to a discerning bystander give too great encouragement for the making nearer applications to you is in itself such an undecent way of assuming that it may provoke the tame creature to break loose and to show his dominion for his credit which he was content to forget for his ease in short the surest and the most approved method will be to do like a wise minister to an easy prince first give him the orders you afterwards receive from him with all this that which you are to pray for is a wise husband one that by knowing how to be a master for that very reason will not let you feel the weight of it one whose authority is so softened by his kindness that it giveth you ease without abridging your liberty one that will return so much tenderness to your just esteem of him that you will never want power though you will seldom care to use it such a husband is as much above all the other kinds of them as a rational subjection to a prince great in himself is to be preferred before the disquiet and uneasiness of unlimited liberty before i leave this head i must add a little concerning your behavior to your husband's friends which requireth the most refined part of your understanding to acquit yourself well of it you are to study how to live with them with more care than you are to apply to any other part of your life especially at first that you may not stumble at the first setting out the family into which you are grafted will generally be apt to expect that like a stranger in a foreign country you should conform to their methods and not bring in a new model by your own authority the friends in such case are tempted to rise up in arms as against an unlawful invasion so that you are with the utmost caution to avoid the least appearances of anything of this kind and that you may with less difficulty afterwards give your directions be sure at first to receive them from your husband's friends 
gain them to you by early applying to them and they will be so satisfied that as nothing is more thankful than pride when it is complied with they will strive which of them shall most recommend you and when they have helped you to take root in your husband's good opinion you will have less dependence upon theirs though you must not neglect any reasonable means of preserving it you are to consider that a man governed by his friends is very easily inflamed by them and that one who is not so will yet for his own sake expect to have them considered it is easily improved to a point of honor in a husband not to have his relations neglected and nothing is more dangerous than to raise an objection which is grounded upon pride it is the most stubborn and lasting passion we are subject to and where it is the first cause of the war it is very hard to make a secure peace your caution in this is of the last importance to you and that you may the better succeed in it carry a strict eye upon the impertinence of your servants take heed that their ill-humor may not engage you to take exceptions or their too much assuming in small matters raise consequences which may bring you under great disadvantage remember that in the case of a royal bride those about her are generally so far suspected to bring in a foreign interest that in most countries they are insensibly reduced to a very small number and those of so low a figure that it doth not admit the being jealous of them in little and in the proportion this may be the case of every new married woman and therefore it may be more advisable for you to gain the servants you find in a family than to tie yourself too fast to those you carry into it you are not to overlook these small reflections because they may appear low and inconsiderable for it must be said that as the greatest streams are made up of the small drops at the head of the springs from whence they are derived so the greater circumstances of your life will be in some degree directed by these seeming trifles which having the advantage of being the first acts of it have a greater effect than singly in their own nature they could pretend to i will conclude this article with my advice that you would as much as nature will give you leave endeavor to forget the great indulgence you have found at home after such a gentle discipline as you have been under everything you dislike will seem the harsher to you the tenderness we have had for you my dear is of another nature peculiar to kind parents and differing from that which you will meet with first in any family into which you shall be transplanted and yet they may be very kind too and afford no justifiable reason to you to complain you must not be frighted with the first appearance of a differing scene for when you are used to it you may like the house you go to better than that you left and your husband's kindness will have so much advantage of yours that we shall yield up all competition and as well as we love you be very well contented to surrender to such a rival end of section o two advice to a daughter husband